So this is uh, obviously every preseason is, is big for you guys, but you got some questions, you got some competitions and some things you, you got to try to figure out your best five. Is that right? So what's kind of what's kind of the goal for you in your line as you work through these, you know, two or three weeks before you get to uh, the season? Well, we we, <clears throat> we always talk about, um, you know, training camp. You basically have four um, phases. Okay, the first one is your maturation as a player, so that's your growth and your development. Uh, the second one is the installation of the offense, right? And learning exactly how we're going to do things, and and then you have evaluation, which you know yesterday was our first practice in pads, so. That's our first, like, real true evaluation of guys. When we get in these scrimmage situations, you have an opportunity to evaluate them, and then, and then you eventually you transition into preparation phase. So the goal, you know, for us as a unit is to um, identify, um, you know, who our best five guys are through the evaluation process but also to continue the maturation process as well and continue to develop as players. You know, so we're just, just not, you know, every day in practice, an opportunity to get better and continue to grow. So that's kind of the, the goal of training camp. Now eventually, obviously we'll move into preparation phase and getting ready right. for our upcoming opponent. Obviously when you look inside at center, that's the one spot where I know it's a big focus preseason to identify who your starting center is going to be. Bullis Schmidt was there in the spring. Drake Metcalf arrived in summer. Caden Kittler has been there last year. How are you handling that competition? Uh, they've been on a rotation. So, so you have uh, like one guy one day and maybe seven the next guy No, the next so day we go or? period by period. Okay. So if we have, you know, three periods of team, then one of the racks, you know, Bull is going to be in there. One rack, Caden will be in there. One rack, uh, Drake will be in there with the ones. Okay. So we have, you know, we got three units that we're rolling right now. So every yeah. every period of team, we're able to, you know, rep three different units. So I just rotate those centers. Okay. And uh, so they've all been getting work um, with our with our our not with our one unit. And we'll, like I said, once we get into <clears throat> these scrimmages. Um, That'll give us an opportunity right. to really evaluate right. where how, those guys how are. How do you think about Wade Bula? He was here in the spring. He comes in with starting experience from Fresno State. How has he kind of integrated into everything? Well, he's been great. Yeah. Yeah, he's been great. He, um, you know, he's got a lot of experience. So, you know, you're talking about a guy that's, I know he started 30 plus games right. in his career, so he's played a lot of football. So, um, transition has been really smooth. Um, he, you know, he gets along great in the room. Right. He's got a great football IQ. Um, he brings a, um, you know, some pop to the position and some. Uh, um, he's got a little bit of an edge yeah. to him, which I like. So, yeah, he, what, everything's been going well. What do you him. like about Drake? I know he got here in the summer, wasn't able to participate in spring, but. If he's a guy I know you were high on when you recruited him. Um, I know it's still early, but what have you seen from Drake Metcalf? Uh, again, really good football IQ. Um, coming from Stanford, uh, you know, he's a, he graduated Stanford in three years, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, he's played, played at a high level. Um, he, uh, he's a strong dude he's got a lot of girth to him you know um, he can move guys inside um, you know he's still learning right uh, all the little things but um, but he's he's an experienced player that he's been very well coached I know is you know the guy that's uh, coached him Kevin Carberry he's a very good friend of mine and and I guess I guess well I guess carbs coached him his first year um, and then Kevin's been in the NFL, um, but um, been very well coached, and you know he brings him brings that experience yeah. to the position. I know so. it's the all, I mean, there's the quarterback competition. Everyone wants to know, you know, 
maybe the, the, the teammate, like you kind of see it, like the teammates kind of know sometimes before you actually have to declare who's number one. But what's kind of the time frame for a center? Is it looking at, you know, the conclusion of camp? Is it one of those competitions that will be ongoing? Is it, you know, the sooner the better you can make a decision so they can get more reps with the first team? What, what kind of time frame is there on it? Um, you know, you'd like to figure things out fairly soon, but we're not in a rush. Right. We got really good, we got three really good players here. Um, so, you know, as we go through these scrimmages and, and um, a lot of our situational stuff that we've got going on, you know, that, that'll, that'll sort itself out. But um, all three of those guys are, are playing really well right now. Yeah. Uh, what's that tackle competition looking like? You've got Tylen Grables back from injury. Ed Collins is experienced. Paul Rubelt got his feet wet last right. year. You've got Amari Kite. There's a lot of guys in the mix. You know, how how do you kind of shake shake that out? And who's kind of maybe impressed early? Um, you know, kind of the same situation in terms of shaking it out. You know, it's going to really, as we go through these scrimmages, it'll all sort itself out at that position. But you know, Tylen's a returning starter, so um, you know. He had to, um, uh, you know, didn't participate in spring, but right. um, but he's back and he's he looks great. He's been practicing really well. Um, like you said, you know, you got Ed Collins who um, just got tremendous leadership and experience with him, and then you know Paul, who's really really grown as a player gotten better uh, each and every year and you know his um, execution and not only from a assignment standpoint but technique and fundamentals is really starting to catch up with his physical gifting you know um, he's a big strong dude and you got Amari you know who uh, has got experience has played at a real high level, at a great program for some great coaches, and um, you know, so he's he's right in the mix as well. So we've got it's a good it's a good competition yeah. right now. When we talked to Marcellus Marshall at the end of spring, I know it was kind of open ended when he came in. He's a guard or tackle, tackle or guard. It seemed like guard was kind of what he was fitting into. Is that kind of your expectation for where he would probably contribute and compete this year? Um, he could play tackle as well. Yeah. You know, he was. He rep tackle in the spring, uh, kind of settled in at the guard position. But you know, you're talking about a guy that was an all-conference right. offensive tackle at his at his previous place, and so um, the move back, if you will, yeah. would not be difficult for him. Yeah. Very talented guy. Uh, that has got a. Uh, uh, Great leadership qualities and um, really good football IQ, and he's got a high um, we call it give a crap factor. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. he really, he cares. He cares deeply about the same thing with you know all those guys. Yeah. They really, I, you know, our unit right now is. I've got a really good unit, so yeah. and, and Marcellus is doing a good job with everything. What does Lakahi provide? Obviously, such an experienced guy. You know what you're going to get with him. He's the leader. He's a team captain. Just how reassuring is it to you knowing you have him in your starting lineup? Yeah, he's like a coach on the field. You know, he's an extension of our coaching staff. Um, um, it's just, uh, I, yeah, you sleep yeah. well. You sleep well at night when you got a guy yeah. like him in there. So yeah, I, I do some of these. Questions, you know, you'll know better in a couple weeks after you go through a couple scrimmages. But how do you feel your depth is on the offensive line? That was obviously a big question for you know, every position group going into the Big 12. I mean, you, yeah. hope, you hope the same five guys are 100% the entire year, but that may or may not happen. I, do you feel like your depth is maybe where, where do you think your, your, your depth is right now? Um, this is as deep uh, an offensive line that I've ever had in my career. Okay. Yeah. So we've got. That makes your job more even more difficult to identify. You well, know. you know it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of good. We have a lot of really good players uh, that are playing 
they're playing well. And we gotta, you know, we gotta do it on Saturdays. Right. But guys are working hard. They're 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 talented. Um, you know, they're practicing hard. They're they're gelling. Um, and yeah, you know, I feel really good about just the the quality of our unit right now. Does that change your philosophy? You've always said you're ride or die with starting five. Is that still your philosophy, or if you feel like you've got depth and maybe there's not a drop off, are you more open to you know rotations during a game, or you'll just cross that bridge when you get to it? Yeah, I'll kind of cross that bridge when we get to it, you know. But I th really, um, you know, for the f probably the first time in my career, not probably the first time in my career, I would I would uh, be more more comfortable. Right rolling guys you know um maybe like a whole unit at one time you know just say hey, like a hockey line change you know what i mean right and um to get guys work to get guys game reps to keep guys fresh to help for the you know not only the fourth quarter of games but you know game nine ten eleven twelve as the season wears on you know last year i think our, our starting five you know, they all played around a thousand, some of them more than a thousand snaps, which is a lot of, a lot of plays. So, uh, and there's some merit in that as well. You know, I know when I was a player, I didn't, I, once I earned that starting position, I didn't want to come off the field. Right. Um, but that's how guys are wired, which is a good thing. Um, but we have really good quality players that I think, you know, can help us win. What, you, you've coached at Texas recently. What do you think this first season in the Big 12 is going to be like for for UCF? Obviously, it's going to be a battle every week. Right. Yeah, I've been in that league, you know. Um, you've been to these places. You've been to these venues. You know, you're, right. you're ev every opponent, that, you know, is going to be a raucous environment. You're, you know, NFL caliber D lineman you're going up against every week. Yep. That's, yeah, <laughs> it's... Uh, you know, it'll be a great challenge for our guys. Uh, it's exciting. Um, you know, I think we're ready for it. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, I know our guys are real excited about it. And, um, you know, they're just looking at it as a, as a great opportunity to go out and show people what our program's all about. As a coach, I mean, is this fun? I mean, you're focused on the day-to-day. -day, you're worried about your line. Tomorrow's practice scrimmage on Sunday. But you get to leave UCF into their first season in the Power Five, first year, inaugural year in the Big 12. You get to go to some new venue. I mean, is it, you think it's going to be fun <laughs> for, you, for you personally? I mean, you guys could be to well, win, but, but you, you, know, you got the opportunity to be part of the inaugural UCF Big 12 staff, yeah, and that's, that's a really big deal. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when we look back on it, I think it'll be a really cool thing to look back on, but honestly, right now, I'm just worried about tomorrow's <laughs> yeah. practice and and, uh, you know, getting to our, our opener versus Kent State, anything beyond that is, I don't even yeah. worry about right now. Yeah, there's, yeah. That's not just coach speaking. I know, I know. Paul Lounsbury, I know he's around here a lot, and he's meant so much of this program. He was there in the early days, recruited Dante Culpepper. I know he's around. What kind of resource has he been for you these at least the last couple of years? Just being able to talk to someone who's been an offensive line coach for a long time, highly successful. Yeah, they know all about UCF. Just how has it been yeah. kind of building that relationship? I've actually known Paul for a long time, um, going back to when he was at South Carolina. And um, I think that's the first time I met him and spoke with him and all that. Um, I have tremendous respect for him. Uh, I love the fact that he's around practice all the time. And, you know, he's got, you know, blood, sweat, and tears uh, put in this program. And um, so he's got skin in the game, you know? And um, I just, online coaches, we kind of gravitate to each other. So uh, Paul is, uh, you know, it's awesome having him around as much as he is right. because uh, he, he knows, he knows, uh, he knows this place and he knows what it's like to be in that room with that unit and, um, so he's just been an awesome person to be around. And he's around a lot, which is awesome. So.
Last thing, have you found any good restaurants lately? Any new places to try out, or you know, oh. any recommendations for Night Nation here in the area? That, uh... Well, <clears throat> I've been keeping my eye on um, whenever uh, Torchy's Tacos is supposed to open up out in Altamont Springs. You know, that's a Texas uh, chain. Is it okay? So I probably shouldn't have said that because <laughs> now everybody will go there when it opens. I won't. I'll have to wait in line, but. No, I don't, that'll, that's something I, every day on my phone I check to see if it's open yet. So I can uh, go out there and, uh, and hit that place up by Torchy's Tacos when it does open. And that was a favorite place when you were in Texas, maybe? Uh, I think probably the first month I was there, I bet I ate there 20 times in the first month. It was fantastic. So so what are some of those Texas chains that, uh, or, I don't know, chains or just uh, for fans going to be going to these big 12 venues? I mean, it, right. I know you say fans are going to Kansas, they're going to Lubbock. I don't I don't know if you've been to Lubbock before other than for, for, the, for the games itself, but yeah. I don't know if you've kind of been in the city, but what are some yeah. of those Texas places you like? Oh. You got a favorite barbecue place? Yeah, well, you got uh, in, in Austin, you have, uh, Salt Lake. you know, Franklin Barbecue. Salt Lake is out that yeah. way. Um, uh, little barbecues are really good barbecue place. I mean, you're not going to get bad barbecue in Texas. I can just tell you that. So. All right, man. I appreciate it. Enjoyed yes, it as always. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Good luck to you.